on to literature three, plot. So do you all have your paragraphs about setting with you? Yes. yes. Great. Would anyone like to share those? Go back to sleep. 
So then Calvin and his little pet tiger, Hobbs, they say good night, and Calvin says goodbye, as in, I'm going to be eaten by monsters. This is the last time you see me, maybe. Now, Calvin then shouts down under his bed. He's like, any monsters under my bed tonight? So Calvin has this thing where he thinks there are monsters under his bed. And he just sits there looking very perplexed. And then uh, Hobbs, the tiger, says, there's no answer. Do you think they're gone? Calvin says, maybe they're <laughs> staying quiet. Watch the other side of the bed. Now he says, boy, am I full. I must have gained 10 pounds today. Maybe I'm getting a little plump. So he might say it's going to attract the monster. So he's using all these techniques. Anyway, so uh, as you can see in this one comic strip, there's very quickly, just in this first part, that conflict. So Calvin says, don't turn out the light. You didn't check for monsters. His dad is like, I'm sure there are no monsters. So you see that conflict right off the bat. Now, not all stories are like that, but most stories will have that kind of conflict where two people think differently or uh, two people or two groups or whatever that is, then that is part of the book. Now, with your response to literature, your job is to defend your book or comic book, and in order to defend that book or comic book, you need to convince your readers that the story is meaningful or interesting. Now, one way we talked about was using the setting, and that's what you were writing your paragraphs or your sentences about your setting for, was to convince the readers that your book was meaningful and interesting using the setting. And another way you can do that is to convince them that the plot or the premise of the book is worthwhile. So a lot of times, if you're telling someone about a book and they want to know whether they should read it, they'll ask you, well, what's it about? And that's the plot or the premise of the book. Like a hook, a paragraph about the book's plot is a good way to get readers interested in the book you're writing about. So how do you tell your readers about plot? Let's practice. What book should I tell readers about? Let's just think of a book everyone's read. What's a book everyone's read? Luke Baldwin's Vow. I'm sorry? Luke Baldwin's Vow. I actually haven't read that one. Um, let's see. Is there a book like pretty much every single person on earth has read? I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, hmm. What's a book that you guys, uh, hmm. How about, let's see, how many of you have read the How many of you have read the Chronicles of Narnia? Two of us. Two of us. Okay, so maybe that's not a good one. Um, how about? Um, I guess we could do Harry Potter. That's pretty common. Have any of you read that one?
he is to go to the Hogwarts ah, of witchcraft and wizardry. Harry's aunt and uncle are so enraged or <coughs> defiant that uh, his cousin Dudley ends up getting a pigtail in the process. All right, what's wrong with this so far? What is something wrong with this description? It's run on. Yeah, it's very run on. And it's it has a lot, well yeah, that's when there are run on sentences. But another thing is that it gets way too detailed. So Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is not like a giant book, but it's still pretty long. And if I go at this rate describing every single thing that happens along the way, then there's no way I'm going to be able to tell readers about the whole plot uh, in a meaningful or somewhat short paragraph. So that problem is that if I want to tell readers about the big picture, I don't need to go into every little detail, like the fact that Dudley gets a pig's tail, or um, that kind of thing. So I might start off with he goes to the aunt and uncle, has a dreary life, learns these magical powers, goes to Hogwarts. Maybe I could condense that into a much shorter little paragraph. So you don't need to write down the whole story because someone has already done that for you, the author. Instead of writing the whole story all over again, we want to share what we thought about the story. That's what makes our response special. Instead of just writing down every single minute detail that happens in Harry Potter, we would write what we thought about the story. In the first paragraph, we hooked our reader's attention, gave the book's title, summarized the book, and shared our intentions. In our second paragraph, we shared our opinion on the book's setting. Now, in our third paragraph, which we'll be working on today, we want to share our opinions on the book's plot. So, uh, when you think about the plot, what happens in your story, try to think how you like that. How do you like the sequence of events? How do you like the storyline? Start by asking questions. Did you like the book's plot? Why or why not? Sorry, this <coughs> is a little, uh, not contrast, but so what do you think? Did you like the plot of your book? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so why did you like it? Because it was interesting. Because it was interesting? What made it interesting? It had, uh, it was not, the plot wasn't boring, and, uh, it made it more exciting. Okay, so we might start off with something like, uh, the plot is interesting, and then we might talk about what makes the plot interesting. So it wasn't boring, uh, it was very exciting, you said. What else made the plot really interesting?
what's in Harry Potter? There always seems to be a problem right there. Yeah, there always seems to be a problem. So one of the big conflicts is Harry Potter versus Voldemort, because he's like the big villain in the story. But along the way, there's also little villains. So in school, Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy don't exactly get along. So there are those little conflicts uh, that really provide a basis of quite a bit of the story. So ask yourself, what is the main conflict or problem that the character faces? Now a conflict or a problem may be between two people, two <coughs> options, two ways of life, or two ideas. Wonder if it's in there. So what is an example of a conflict in your own life? Any ideas? What is a conflict you've had before? Arguing about my uh, curfew. Arguing about your curfew? Yeah, that would be a definite example of a conflict. And there are probably lots of characters in books who also argue about their curfew. That would be a conflict for them. So you find conflicts in your own life. You find conflicts in books. And you want to talk about that in your plot. So a conflict can be a disagreement, a struggle, a challenge, or a choice. Conflicts can be internal. They can be external. What is an internal conflict? Um, a conflict that you have in your head. A conflict that you have in your head, exactly. So, would anyone like to give me an example of an internal conflict from a book? Is there any time maybe where a character has to decide between doing one thing or a different thing? Hatchet, it's 
uh, him versus the forest, the wilderness of character versus setting, but it's also an internal conflict when you think about that. And so a lot of books will have a ton of different conflicts in them. In my comic book, Something Under the Bed is Drooling, it's Calvin versus the monsters he thinks of. Calvin versus his parents, because his parents think that he's imagining monsters. It's adult world versus kids world. And it's also Calvin versus Susie Durkins, his next door neighbor. Calvin versus all of his teachers. It's pretty much Calvin versus anything that comes into contact with him. A lot of conflicts in that comic book. Now, if we think of Harry Potter again, there are quite a few conflicts in there as well. There's Harry versus the Dursleys, uh, Hagrid versus the Dursleys, Harry versus Snape, Harry and Ron versus Hermione, Harry, Hermione, and Ron versus Draco. There are all these different uh, different conflicts. What do most of you have in common? Well, most of these are character versus character conflicts. So sometimes you'll see character versus setting, sometimes you'll see character versus character. Have you ever read a book where two people in the book are fighting? Yeah. Yeah, we probably all have because that's very common and that would be an example of a conflict at one of those character versus character conflicts. So let's make a list of conflicts for another book. Uh, what are some, what is a book that has a lot of conflicts in it? Anyone? It makes the book more interesting. It makes the book more interesting, exactly. 
Now, as you all know, we all have conflicts in real life, so it would not be, don't you think it would be a little weird to just open up a book that had no conflicts whatsoever? It wouldn't be that realistic. So that's why a lot of times authors will put in conflicts because it makes it more realistic. Everyone has conflicts, no matter how old or what you look like or whatever, everyone has conflicts, and so it's natural that fictional characters would too. For example, if there weren't any conflicts in Harry Potter, then no one would bother to read it. And when you write about plot, there's more to write about than the conflict, however. There are lots of other things to write about. So, for instance, uh, did the book's storyline make sense? Why or why not? Does anyone like to tell me, did your book's storyline make sense? Why or why not?
context of the story, whether it's historical or modern or whatever, and then also the premise, girl falling in love with the vampire, for instance. And so you want to think about what makes a plot interesting to you when you're writing your response to literature. So for instance, I think that something under the bed is drooling is interesting because the author never really lets you know whether Calvin is right or whether his parents are right, whether he's imagining and making things up or whether he actually goes to these other worlds and uh, is spaceman spiff and all these cool things that he does. So it's sort of, you never really know who's right and who's wrong, which is kind of interesting. But I'm getting off topic. It's time to brainstorm about the book that you chose. So step number one is list your ideas. List your ideas. So remember I was asking you all these questions. Well, I wasn't just picking your mind to annoy you. Actually, I wanted you, uh, well, firstly, to hear your opinions. And then secondly, I want you to be able to write those ideas. Some of the stuff you said to me, write that down. Uh, so for instance, we were talking about what makes the book be interesting, the historical context, write that down. What makes the great cowboy so interesting, the ending, the excitement, write that down. So pretty much everything you've told me, just write that down, list your ideas. It doesn't have to be in any particular kind of order, just write it down. I'm still writing my answer, so. <laughs> I can't really see the four Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know, it's a little hard to see. Um, I can, so basically it's, do you like the book's plot? Why or why not? So I'm going to stop saying why or why not, but 
Um, just assume it's there. So, like, you like the book's plot. What is the main conflict? So, right, like plot, main conflict, storyline makes sense. Does the storyline make sense to you? Is the plot believable? Is the plot interesting? So, uh, just if you want to write this down quickly, then write uh, conflict, makes sense, believability, and that's probably not a word, and interesting. And then you can write some of your answers. So, for instance, for do you like the book's plot, why or why not, I might write something like, I like the plot because it provides interesting perspectives and contrasts between one person's point of view and another person's, uh, and it highlights that. What is the main conflict in the story? So, I'm doing Calvin Hobbes. Kids versus kids world versus adult world. Does the book storyline make sense? Why or why not? It does make sense because some of the events happening I can see happening in my own life. Uh, actually, that might be believable. Sorry, but yeah. So makes sense. Believability, whether it's interesting or not. Those are some of the things you want to do. every single one you don't have to worry too much because you don't necessarily have to use every single thing you've written down here in your paragraph on plot you can just use it as kind of a jumping off point so who would like to share what they have so far uh, what was number four what was number four is, is it believable <laughs> sorry um next time I, i'm kind of experimenting if you can tell with the background colors trying to see which shows up better but it looks like just plain white is the best. Yep. And what was number five? Interesting. Is the plot interesting? Now, remember, when you're answering these questions, don't just put yes, the plot was interesting. Put the plot was interesting because I learned this, 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 or because these perspectives were offered, or give them more reasons. That's really important.
share your answers. Keep those hands up. It's one that you 
seems really familiar to you. And so when you think about your box plot, you want to think, is it something really special, something that people might be able to recognize? And, and if so, you would want to write about that. Now, can anyone name the main conflict in Charlotte's Web? Uh, like, the charge to the Main conflict.
two words that describe your main character? Greed. Greedy. Uh, brave and curious. Brave and curious. Very good word usage there. And I would definitely use that. So uh, it's important to describe your character just so that we get a little taste of what that character is like. So, for instance, uh, lonely, greedy, gullible, rich, spoiled. Those are all a few words. And you can also think about maybe how your character relates to you. Do you feel any sort of, uh, do you want this character to make it through the book? What, how do you feel about the character even? Also think about things like that. So ask yourself what is the conflict. And once you're, fi you're finished kind of answer answering all those questions, it's your turn. So we went through some of these questions. Is the plot believable? What do you think about this? Originality, meaningful or interesting. So here's rule number one. Don't give away the book's ending. Why don't you want to give away the book's ending in your response literature? Because you want the people to uh, get curious and read it? Yeah, exactly. You want people to get curious and read it, which is a very important part. Now, I know, actually, this might be a little hard because I know that one of the big things of the Great Power Race is that interesting ending, but you could maybe talk about it in such a way, for instance, and this ending is one that may make them regret having ever, what was it, inventing a mystery cap, something like that. Okay, so don't try not to give away the book's ending if you can. And so that makes the people really interested. They want to find out what happens. So try to build up to that. So before our next session, please write, uh, sorry, take out your response to literature. So do you all have that thing where you added on your settings, your introduction, take that out? And then consult the answers you listed earlier. So remember how we were writing about what makes our plot interesting, what makes it believable, etc. Now, start a new paragraph, uh, and by, by our next session, start a new paragraph below your paragraph on setting. Use some of the answers you wrote earlier. So you're going to be writing a new paragraph about plot, and this one should contain some of those answers you wrote earlier. You can write about the conflict, so the big argument and disagreements, and you can write about what makes your plot interesting. A new paragraph about plot. So in one sentence, just going step by step through the paragraph here, in one sentence, be sure to tell the reader who the book is about. So who is the book about? Is it about a spider? Is it about a spy? Is it about a rambunctious kid? Tell the reader who the book is about and describe the main conflict. So your story will have a lot of conflicts, but think about what is the main conflict. For instance, getting back home. Consult the list of answers you wrote earlier. Write a few sentences based on those answers. Tell your readers what you think about the book's plot. I love the book's pop plot because I found it very believable and realistic. I uh, somewhat disliked the book's plot. So tell your reader what you think about the plot. And then in one to two sentences, explain why the book was meaningful or interesting to you. So if you think about it, it's really the who, what, why in here. So who the book is about, what the book is about, what you think about the book's plot, why the book is meaningful or interesting to you. So uh, let me, you can actually, probably you don't have to write down steps two to three. The most important steps for you to write down are one, four, and five. Yeah, because you already have two.
pretty basic. Two, it's about what's the main problem, why you like the book, what makes it meaningful or interesting. Yeah. And that is your paragraph on plot. And have that done by next session. Add it to your response to literature. Write it on that existing page with your introduction, your paragraph about setting. And, and you will get a little more of your response to literature done by next session. Alrighty, are there any questions that I can quickly answer about this assignment or response to quickly? What's the weather like in Washington? <laughs> What's the weather right like in Washington? It is right now rainy, ugly, gloomy, and just about other negative words that I can come up with. It's like that most of the time. It's really <laughs> nice here. Yeah. Oh, oh, thanks cool. for rubbing it in. I think <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite hobby, Pete? What's my favorite hobby? Uh, probably writing, but also I love, oh, my favorite, what was it, sorry? Hobby. Hobby, oh, hobby. I'm Pete. Oh, okay. Hobby. Um, sorry, I kind of missed her. Yeah, I love doing writing, reading, drawing, hiking, all of that. Hockey team. Uh, oh, hobby. hockey team. That's what, <laughs> my mom came down, she heard that, and she was like, she was just mouthing at me, and I was like, Mom, you can't. Oh, right. Hockey team. Um, hmm. I don't really have one. Which one do you recommend? Montreal. 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 Okay, I'll, I'll, remember, I'll remember to say that to you next time if you ask me what's my favorite hockey team. Montreal. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for informing me a little bit more about hockey because I don't think I've actually known of too many hockey teams before. <laughs> um, actually, if, if it makes, if it, if it uh, is any better, I don't know that much about many other sports either. I would be kind of at a loss if you asked me for, like, actually one time I was video conferencing with students in New York and they asked me, what's my favorite football team? And I don't really follow football that much, but I knew who had just won the Super Bowl, so I just said that. Usually works. <laughs> okay, uh, well thank you very much for video conferencing and talking about response to literature. Remember to have that paragraph done by next session about plot, and I'm looking forward to talking with you for our next session. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.